Uh, good to have you both on this morning. Katerina, I want to start with you. I'm looking at your most recent note, and you, you posit that valuations remain rich. Is it your take, then, that we're in the midst of a bear market rally and we have lower to go with stocks? Morgan, that is exactly the case. In our view, as, as much as we're excited about this um, rally, we view it as a technical rally. And we think it might last for some time, but eventually we will be seeing some earnings-driven declines as the earnings must come down to a more realistic level in order for us to see the actual path to the recovery. Because it will be possible for companies to realistically beat the earnings and start reaching new new heights. So as much as we want to be optimistic, we are, uh, you know, in our view, we are still in the bear market. And this is going to continue for some time. Stephen, do you see it the same way? Unfortunately, we do. Uh, this is going to take more time. There are some earnings restraints that are showing up this year, but we expect EPS to fall 10% next year. Uh, and that's, again, even as we've had this long-winded period here to build up to it. Now, again, do we have a very good down payment on the end of the bear market having fallen 20%? Yes. But we're not, and we've never seen in the past, uh, the economy or markets bottoming before the very first of the employment and profit declines occurred. We're expecting that in the first half of the year, and uh, it's going to take that much time, we think. So if never having had that happen before, we wouldn't count on it this time. We think we'll be closer to halfway through a recessionary period for us to build a new bull market. Hey, Katerina, I know uh, Mike Wilson has said uh, that we could get to, say, 2950 s and in the next three to four months. I think B of A has also talked about a spring low in March, April, May. What is, uh, what's so interesting about the first half of next year in terms of calling for a, a real bottom? Well, you know, it's, it's impossible to pull the bottom as much as we're tempted to do so. But we do know that we are somewhere near the bottom. And historically speaking, when we buy good quality stocks near the bottom, forward-looking returns are significantly higher than ever. So this is the time where we want to be defensive in the short run because we're not out of the woods yet, but we need to be strategic in the long run. And we need to have a realistic time frame and think not two or three months out, but we need to think two years out, you know, when we are actually going to be hitting the recovery, because it is extremely important that we like what we own coming out of this environment. We're excited about 23. We are going to be seeing some significant earnings revisions, but we think that that is what is going to bring us into the recovery and the, in, in, you know, get us out of this bear market. Because it will be nice to, to stop saying that we're in the bear market. It would be good to move into the bull market territory. And we're eventually going to get there. And it will be a Fed-driven uh, recovery. And it will be an earnings-driven recovery. And it's coming. But we're not quite there yet. Okay. So, Stephen, we've got midterm elections tomorrow. We know that this is a seasonally strong period, t typically, historically, for the market, including fueled by midterms, uh, especially when you see something like, for example, a divided government coming out of those results, which is right now what polls are suggesting. How do you play this rally right here if you think there's more pain to come in 2023? Well, the statistics may be on the side, again, of a divided government being better. Uh, and yes, that's been true, but it won't be the most dominant factor when you're heading into a new recession. So, again, I don't think that this is something people haven't heard about, haven't thought about. I think we have seen investors position portfolios bearishly. This is why we've had two rallies exceeding 10 percent already, already this year and came pr uh, pretty close. Uh, we have an immense short base in equities and in fixed income and in currencies. So we're going to be volatile. But to say that a divided government by itself is going to uh, cure our problems, right, of uh, a turning point for the economy, all of this accumulated Fed tightening that's behind us uh, that is going to reduce employment by, we think, by 2 million people next year, um, it's just uh, giving too much weight to this political consideration. Yeah. Wasn't saying it was going to cure our issues. More curious about the seasonality and what it means for investors and positioning right now. Stephen and Katerina, nice we're going to leave the conversation. Right there.